Janna stepped through the swirling ash, eyes fixed on the hazy red glow of sunrise. It was moving day for her nomadic tribe, the day each month when they broke camp and sought new grazing lands. But this migration felt different, final. For generations, Janna's people had roamed what was once the American West, finding sustenance where they could on the drought-ravaged plains. But each year the living grew harder as their world withered and wildfires raged. Janna glanced back at the fifteen remaining souls under her care, their faces etched with hunger and exhaustion. She couldn't bear to watch the elders and children suffer much longer. Today they would finally seek salvation in the mythical metropolis of Hesperus, a utopian stronghold rumored to be rising from the ashes back east. Janna doubted such a place existed, but they were out of options. Their choice now was migration or death. As Janna guided her ragged band up the powdery slopes, doubts assailed her. Would she be leading them only to more suffering? But she steeled herself and pressed on. Giving up was guaranteed demise. Pushing forward at least offered a sliver of hope. The climate grew more punishing as they ascended above the choking dust clouds. Frigid winds howled, threatening to tear their shelters away. Janna urged her people to endure this final trial. From the snow-swept peak, Janna saw no sanctuary on the horizon, only endless desolation. Their long-held dreams were collapsing to reveal a harsh truth. The world they once knew was gone. With leaden heart, Janna turned to her people. This is our life now, she said quietly, but we will face it together. Janna's tribe huddled in a rocky enclave, shielding themselves from the punishing winds. As the last embers of hope guttered out, panic threatened to take hold. Some wept, Others stared ahead numbly. Only the young children seemed unaffected, playing with stones and nestling into their mother's arms. Janna's words, this is our life now, echoed in her mind. She knew despair could be as deadly as the elements if she failed to reignite her people's will to endure. They needed a new purpose to unite them. When the winds died down, Janna emerged to forage for food. The frozen landscape offered little, but she scraped together lichen, shriveled tubers, anything to sustain them. Each small mouthful was a tiny victory. At night, she told stories of distant lands with roaring rivers, wild game, and clean skies. Whether real or imagined, they provided flashes of beauty to counter the desolation. One child asked, will we ever see places like that? Janna smiled sadly. Perhaps not, she said, but we can envision them in our hearts. The children gave Janna an idea, in the protected cave walls, she helped them paint vibrant scenes from her stories. The figments of better worlds kindled a spark of vitality among the tribe. When a teenage boy became seriously ill, the healers said he would not last the night. Janna sat with him, describing his favorite imagined landscape, a verdant valley of waterfalls and rainbows. As light faded from his eyes, she saw a smile touch his lips. Her stories had carried him somewhere beyond suffering. Though the future stretched grimly ahead, Janna resolved to nourish her people's spirits with hope and beauty as long as she could. Their world was circumscribed now by rock and scarcity, but imagination and courage were boundless. These would be their salvation.